Rejoice! The military tutorial is upon you. Well, part one, anyway. Military is such an enormous subject in Dwarf Fortress that it's going to take at least a full hour just to explain how everything works. As such, I'll be breaking it down into a series of videos, hopefully three to five parts at most. This video, the first part, will cover the process of creating and then commanding military squads. This is the most pared down that a military tutorial can be in scope, but I will be going into detail about the process and its nuances, so strap in and prepare to learn probably too much. Let us not succumb to fear. We'll dive directly into the military menu first thing, by pressing M. Now just hold on a second. I see the terror in your eyes, but don't give up so soon. This isn't the outdated point of sale software from some retail chain, no. This menu can make sense to you, we just need to break it down into parts. First, know that the military menu is actually a set of sub-menus that you can switch between using the hotkeys listed on the bottom, here. Currently, we're in the Positions submenu, which is convenient since that's where squads are made and managed. Up top is contextual information specific to the current submenu. Since we're in Positions, we can see here how many squads, soldiers, and active soldiers we have. We also get a hotkey to create a new squad led by the Militia Commander, listed here. This middle section is the meat of the submenu. Here in Positions, we get three lists. The first for squads and leaders, the second for squad positions, and the third for candidates. The only military position that currently exists is the Militia Commander, which is actually a noble position as well and is currently vacant. That brings us to an important primer on Dwarven military. Though it's not made very obvious, Dwarves do have a command structure with roles and rules. The top of the chain is the Militia Commander. This noble not only leads a squad, but also organizes Militia Captains, lesser nobles who command their own squads as well, but have no other authority. You can appoint these nobles in the Nobles menu, accessed from the main screen by pressing N. You'll see that there is no Captain Noble listed yet, but when we assign a Commander and re-enter the menu, the option to create a Captain appears. A demonstration of how the Commander appoints Captains. You'll notice that rather than Vacant, the Captain position is labeled New. That's because it doesn't actually exist yet, but will once a Dwarf is appointed. When the Dwarf is removed from the position, it will then appear as Vacant. Unfortunately, it's impossible to remove unwanted Captain positions, they just remain as Vacant forever. Let's drive this home with a little demonstration. We'll appoint the commander as well as two captains before returning to the military menu. Now we see not just the commander, but two captains listed under squads and leaders. This list isn't just a list of squads. It's actually a list of leaders where the leader's title is overwritten by their squad if one exists. Fun fact, the captain of the guard can also lead a squad, though their noble position is more related to policing the fort than fighting goblins. One last thing to mention about these noble leadership roles is that you don't need to appoint them in the nobles menu. I certainly never do, because it's just as easy to have them appointed here during squad creation. So let's reverse all this, start fresh, and see just how to make some squads for the first time. Since the Militia Commander is selected, as the only option, we can press C to create squad. A list of uniforms to choose from appears, and uniforms will be covered in a later video, so for now we'll just use the arrow keys and enter to select metal armor and move on. Now we have a squad where it once said Militia Commander. This is the squad led by the Militia Commander. Rather than go to the Nobles menu to appoint a dwarf there, we can choose who the commander is by filling the first slot of this squad. The first slot of every squad is its leader. Note that I can't fill any other positions unless the first position is filled, because we need the leader to appoint the others. This is the command structure that's kind of hard to see in action. Using the arrow keys, we can move between the three lists and select the top candidate as the leader, and consequently, the militia commander of the fortress. Now the selected position moves down one automatically, making it easy to appoint more dwarves to the squad. Let's also fill slots 2, 3, and 6, because I can. 
With a squad now created, under the direct command of the militia commander, we could leave this menu and start telling them to bash the local wildlife to their dwarven heart's content. However, we'll stick around just long enough to figure out captains and additional squads as well. While the commander's squad is selected, we essentially have the commander selected, and thus we see an option to create squad appointed by this leader. This literally means have the militia commander create a new captain position and create a squad for it. When we press L, we get that same uniforms prompt, and we'll select metal armor again. Now we've created a new opening for a captain. Again, we could fill this position in the nobles menu, or just choose a dwarf for the first position in the squad, thus appointing them captain. Also, again, even if we disband this squad, the captain position remains permanently. Kind of annoying if you ask me. Anyway, with the second squad created, we fill it in just the same as the first. Let's pick a dwarf for positions 1 and 2. Notice that with this squad selected, the option to make a new squad isn't there. We must have the commander selected in order to appoint new captains and their squads. Just a few more details about the information up top and we'll get the heck out of here. We can now see that some contextual information has appeared. We have two squads, a total of six soldiers, and zero soldiers are active. That means none of them are currently carrying out an order or scheduled activity. Even if soldiers are scheduled to be active, they aren't listed as active here unless they're actually doing military stuff right now. The next line describes the selected squad's current schedule. At the moment, this squad is not scheduled to be active. Scheduling will be covered in a later video and is not needed to use military dwarves in the field. It's only needed for training and patrolling and the like. We also see the composition of the selected squad here, where it lists how many of the ten positions are filled by some variety of soldier. Since our dwarves are untrained in any weapon, the four positions are all filled with wrestlers. Once they obtain weapons and gain some skills with them, they'll switch to the appropriate title, such as Axe Dwarf or Hammer Lord. If the squad is currently following direct orders, such as attacking an enemy, the option to cancel those orders will appear here, with the hotkey C. Finally, you can name the squad with Shift N. Squad names are typed in, rather than compiled from a dictionary, so it's always a fun time coming up with fearsome titles for your fearsome dwarves. Okay, now let's leave this menu and talk about what to do with our new squads. That's right. We're ignoring the entire rest of this menu for the video. I don't like being here either. That's better. A breath of fresh air. Now we can get to smacking things when we enter the squad menu by pressing S. There's a lot of stuff to look at again, but at least this is the fun stuff. Up top is a list of squads, each with a hotkey used to select them as well as a unit count. Below that is a handful of commands, and you'll notice the pause and resume option from the main screen exists here too. That's because this menu doesn't automatically pause the game, allowing you to give a variety of commands as a battle plays out without repeatedly leaving the menu. It's very nice to have the squad unit counts visible with the game unpaused, so you can see in real time if you're suffering lots of casualties. The first two options to select exclusively and select multiple are labeled with the hotkeys A, etc. These actually mean whichever key is left of the squad you're trying to select. Pressing just that key selects only that squad, while pressing shift that key adds it to or subtracts it from your selection, allowing you to command multiple squads at once. Then there's four keys used in the heat of battle. First, you can give an attack command by pressing K, then move your cursor to a creature and press Enter to command the selected squads to kill it. You can cancel the current command with O, which not only instructs the dwarves to not attack, but tells them to essentially go back to their scheduled duties. When a battle is over, it's a good practice to check that you've canceled all of your squad's orders, else a squad with a move command will stand outside and get rained on until they finally tire of your negligence and stomp back to the tavern in a furious pout. Back to the attack option, again by pressing K, we also saw some options for how to select the target. If we press L, then we bring up a list of creatures on the map that we may want to attack. Just like selecting squads, we press the hotkey next to the creature we want to target, with the option to select multiples using shift and then press enter to give the command. There's also an option to select in rectangle by pressing R. 
Here we can press enter to start drawing a rectangle, and the creatures within that rectangle will appear as a list here. When we press enter again, we are taken to the list menu populated by those creatures we highlighted with the rectangle. We can do our usual selections now and press enter to give the command. Also note the convenient labeling of each listed creature in the field, so you can select an army and pick out priority targets quite handily this way. Then there's moving, which is much less to explain. Pressing M, then moving your cursor to where you want the squad to go, and then pressing enter gives the command to go there. Pretty straightforward for the most part. You do also get a list of points that you can select, again using the listed hotkeys, but this time shift is used to center the camera on the point. These points are created in the notes menu accessed from the main screen by pressing shift N. This is something I'll go over in a later video though, as it pertains to scheduled patrols more so than commanding squads. Finally, there's an option to center on selected squad by pressing Z, which moves your view to that squad's leader. This is more or less helpful depending on how well organized your squad is. There's a few more options as well. You can press S to view the current schedule of the squad. This just takes you to the schedule submenu in the military menu. I guess that's helpful, sure. You can also press T to change the current schedule, something normally done in the alerts submenu of the military menu. This is another one that I suppose maybe you'll do from here, but I sure don't. The option to select individuals by pressing P allows you to then select a squad with its hotkey and open up a list of its individual dwarves. From here you can select the dwarves to give specific commands to each. To return to squad selection, press escape and then P to change back to select squads mode. Oh, and the usual period key command to jump one step ahead in time is quite handy in a military conflict, as things move quickly when unpaused, and sometimes you don't want to miss a moment. And that's it! If we get into even one more subject, this video would probably break 30 minutes and... Wait, what's that? I didn't explain how to arm the dwarves? Oh right, I guess that is important right now, even though uniforms and equipment will be in a future video. Remember how we selected metal armor as the uniform for our squads during their creation? Well, the uniform also includes the weapon. In the case of metal armor and leather armor, the assigned weapon is any melee weapon the dwarf chooses. So all you need to do now is have available melee weapons lying around, whether by trade or crafting, or even brought with embark. The archer uniform allows for any ranged weapon, though getting dwarves to use ranged weapons properly will be most of an entire video, so for now let's just stick with melee. The uniforms are equally forgiving with armor. Metal armor allows for any kind of armor made of metal, and leather armor is the same, but of course made of leather. Though the range of items is quite broad, they do not allow for substitutions, so a dwarf told to wear metal armor uniform will simply not wear anything at all if they can't find metal armor, even if a bunch of bone armor is lying around. That's something that can be changed, again in a future video. And that's it. In Dwarf Fortress, military is an absolutely monstrous topic to learn. I implore you, if you haven't already, boot up a fort and try this stuff out before moving on to the next video. If you don't commit this to memory by using it, you'll almost certainly forget half of it by the time you get through the rest. I'll see you in the next one, which will definitely be more military.